Hello and uh, welcome to yet another lesson on how to work in Shader Graph if your background is in uh, beginner or intermediate level um, computer science stuff. So in the last video that I put out, um, we were talking about how to build a fill shader and we um, briefly discussed how this whole graph here represents a program essentially that runs on the GPU that runs once for every rendered pixel on the screen where this material is attached. So um, uh, just in uh, the uh, shader view here, I'm just gonna demonstrate this uh, for a refresher, create a node, a float, and I'm just uh, going to demonstrate here what happens if uh, we uh, change our input here, uh, our Y cutoff. So you can see that it, it basically fills up um, this, um, our uh, demo view here from the bottom according to whatever this uh, float cutoff is here. So today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk a little bit more about this part here, where we've got a position node where we're reading the position of that a pixel, and then we're doing a split here in order to get the part of it that we want. Um, I'd also like to kind of demystify what's going on with these colors here in, in this uh, little sphere of ours. So the first thing that I'd like to uh, take a look at is um, I'm going to show you the generated uh, code that we get from the shader graph. So inside the shader graph, we don't use vectors uh, to represent position. Uh, we don't use um, uh, color information. At all. We don't use uh, like a color object at all. We use a float three. And a float three basically has the, um, the common um, features of three uh, individual floats, one for R, G, and B in a color node, and one for X, Y, and Z in a uh, in a vector um, color nodes or color objects i should say are not vectors vectors are not colors um, and a little bit of information on that we'll get, get that script in a bit i've just got a, a quick sort of uh, script that i built out uh, it's just whatever a simple modern behavior called temp i just want to show you using autocomplete that the color object uh, in addition to naming things R, G, and B, and then, you know, sorry, this is actually a, a, a float four with the, the uh, alpha member. We have um, some properties such as linear, uh, properties gamma, grayscale, max color component. Um, these all offer additional functionality on this object that are uh, related to what you would do with color, not necessarily with a, um, like, a, a nothing to do with a vector of uh, like one by three. Uh, similarly, if we look at um, vector three, we're just going to call this Beck. Uh, we have some options in here, such as uh, finding the normalized vector of this vector, or you know, calculating the magnitude of a vector. These are ideas that don't relate to colors, despite colors having, you know, three or four, depending how you want to look at it, uh, float components, um, similarly to a vector. So inside the shader code, colors, positions, all this are represented as float threes. We have a position, which is a float three, a normal, which is a float three, a float four for a quaternion. Actually, while I'm here, I can just kind of um, prove quickly that, uh, I mean, if you're familiar with quaternions, you're gonna know this already, but a quaternion has an X, Y, Z, and W component but serves a very different uh, purpose than a, a vector three. It's essentially, um, you know, a four dimensional vector that is used to represent a rotation or um, a heading in three dimensional space. Now, I'm not gonna get into the math as to why you can represent a, a rotation in um, N plus one dimensions in, in a certain space, but um, that's what's going on here with the flow four. So if you understand the general concept of what's going on with uh, float threes and float fours, then you can hopefully accept that when we're working within shader graph here, um, positions and colors are essentially the exact same data type. Um, so to demonstrate that a little bit, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, create a sphere here and I'm going to, uh, along with it, create a uh, quick material here. Oh, I just hit M. <laughs> I'm going to call this um, 
I can't think of a word, so I'm going to call it, uh, you know, a position material. Position mat. Good enough. I'm going to create a new shader graph. Shader graph, HDRP. This can be, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to delete that quick. I'm going to make this an unlit shader graph because I want to get some nice vibrant color in here so I can really show off what's going on. Pardon. Just going to do this again. Shader graph, HDRP, and this is going to be an unlit shader graph. Uh, an unlit shader graph, as opposed to a lit one, just doesn't take in um, like um, lighting information from the scene. Because we don't really care about how we're lighting this thing. We're not trying to make something like a, a pretty scene here. I, just, I really just want to show off some some uh, the way that data is piped through uh, through the shader graph. So opening this up, I am going to grab our position node. And I'm going to pipe its output straight into the color. I'm also going to switch to... Um, no, you know what? I'm going to go to the object for a second. And I'm going to save it. And you can see that our main preview here looks exactly like whatever's in the position node. Um, in the preview on the position node itself. So now we go back to scene. I'm going to um, drag our position shader onto position mat. And drag a position mat onto here. And now... We have this thing in our preview here showing up on our object. We've essentially colored the object. And I'd like to point out that the backside of the object, which you can't see in the preview here within the, um, the shader graph uh, node editor, is blue. So what the heck is going on here? So in order to um, kind of help visualize this idea that uh, positions just get um, carried straight into colors here. I've already gone ahead and created a little script here, which I, I actually switched to once already, demonstrating here what happens if we color an object by its position, basically mimicking a flow three. So we're, for example, here, we're setting the material color to a new color on late update. So after all positions are you know, calculated. Um, R becomes the value of the uh, object's X position in the world. Green becomes the Y position. Blue becomes the um, Z position. Um, I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to keep this other object on the screen for a second here, but I, I just like to kind of use this as a little bit of a proof. I'm going to call this a sample sphere because we're going to use its uh, position to sample what's going on around it. Um, I've also gone ahead. Okay, so I've I've got that um, that script made. I'm just going to drag that onto the sample sphere. I'm going to shrink it down probably to about a tenth the size that it was at um, by default. And I'm going to make sure that my um, my object here with that um, position shader is reset to the center of the world because I'd like to know where zero 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 is. So. Now, if I've done everything correctly, if we run this, our uh, little sphere here should update to the color of its position, if you could assign a color to a position. Okay, it's decided to be red. If I move it over here, it goes black. If I move it to uh, this side, it becomes blue. And then if I move it up, it takes on I'm just going to try to get it sort of directly above this. It becomes green. Now, uh, for those astute of you to notice that it's taking on sort of the nearest color of this object here, which has our shader that ties position directly to color. Um, well, congratulations. That's exactly what's happening here. So just as a, a little idea, what, if we're talking about in terms of RGB, um, how do we represent um, the color red? If we're talking like one red, zero green, zero blue, hey, guess what? We got full red. So the side of this object that leans towards the, um, the positive um, X side becomes more red. If we take this towards the negative side, well, we can't really get a, a color out of a negative number, even though a flow three can absolutely accept one. So we go black. This is effectively clamped at zero. So taking that hint, 
full on um, Y is full G in RGB. And uh, similarly, um, it's not shown in the preview in the um, in the shader graph editor, but uh, positive Z, so sort of away from the camera when we're start in our default um, you know camera position when we start a new scene is going to be more blue. And similarly, anything that kind of falls in between these values is going to combine them in the same RGB fashion. So this is going to be like equal parts red and blue gives you purple. So cool. If you're following that, then you might understand why the position node looks like this and what that means in the world here. So now that we've under, we've explained sort of what's going on with the position, I'd like to go over the various different uh, spaces that we can view this in. Um, I'm going to start off with, okay, so object space. Let's just discuss this, what's going on here. So the center of the object is the center of the sphere. If I grab the object and move the object around, notice that it retains those colors kind of like it, like this is its skin. Its skin is, is these various colors on these various sides. If I rotate it, the color changes follow with the rotation. The reason for this is because sort of RGB black, like the, the center 000, the origin is the center of the sphere. It is like inside the sphere here where there's uh, nothing to render. And then if we talk about the, um, the negative X and negative Y, negative Z in its local space, that would be uh, sort of towards the front, towards this side, down here. So, so as long, we're, we're basically talking about the pixel position in the object's local space. If I go back to position shader here and I change this to um, absolute world, I'm going to show you this one uh, next and save this. I know I, there was world in there. I want to explain absolute world first though. Absolute world works in world space. So for example, if we uh, send it to uh, zero, 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 then it, it looks pretty much identical to what we had in, uh, when we were in object uh, space, but it represents the color of the world pixel position, not the object's local pixel position. Notice how if we take it all the way to, um, you know, down with the, um, the right arrow and the gizmo here, then the whole object eventually uh, takes on a bit of a red hue. In fact, if we go, yeah, if we go uh, into sort of the uh, the negative on the other axes, you just get red. And this looks a little bit orange, but that's because um, HDRP does a little bit of screen space, um, like uh, post processing. So so we've got a little bit of like um, glow that's just kind of leaking from the rest of the the. Uh, scene here and I to be honest with you I couldn't be bothered to set this up in URP. Now that's absolute world. I want to show you the difference between absolute world and world. We'll save it here. So world is essentially skybox mode. So what we're doing here, I'm going to set this back to um, zero zero. Uh, it probably doesn't make a difference but uh, I feel like that's a clean a place to start when we're looking at this. So for this mode, what I'd like you to do is I, I'd like to have you uh, look at the colors, the axis colors on the gizmo. So for example, this is our default um, camera position where we're looking down the blue, um, the blue arrow. As long as our camera lines up looking towards the direction of what any of these axes, we're going to get that color. So we're looking towards the blue direction. That's positive Z. If we look towards positive X, we get red. If we look towards positive Y, we get green. So if you wanted to build a skybox or, you know, have like um, the sphere, let's say, uh, represent a, um, a portal to another world or something like that, and you wanted to draw something inside of this that essentially looks like you're drawing into like another scene into this into your your scene here then you would want to use world um hopefully that explained that well um view and i'm going to save here view literally measures the position of the screen so you'll notice that no matter what side i'm looking at this from as i rotate around this the um, x and y um center 0x to 0y is actually going to be the um, the very center of my screen divided into quadrants. 
and you're never going to see any of the, the uh, blue component in this way, even though technically Unity uses a, uh, a vector three um, to represent screen space, the depth is, is pretty well useless here. And then the final one that we have uh, to look at here is tangent space. And you'll notice that in our shader graph, it's actually just black. And so it's not going to show us anything useful in this mode. I'll get into tangent space in another future video, but for now, just uh, recognize that it, um, it uh, holds a different purpose than the other view modes. And that, my friends, I, I think a good place to stop with this one. If you uh, are following this uh, so far, um, good for you. Okay, you know what? Actually, there's one more thing I want to just kind of remind you of. So um, we were talking here about uh, in the uh, last video, there was a, um, oh, what was it called? It's um, split, the split node. So if you understand how uh, position can relate to color, and how it enter you enter position as a color sort of into the shader graph here, then remember that if you need to get a specific component of your color, so for example, position.y or position.x or position.z, you know what, to mix it up here, I'm going to go with uh, uh, the z position or blue. So you know, remember here that um, the z coordinate is not represented in the uh, node preview, but our main preview is showing black. But it, um, as you can imagine, if we go to our scene, we have the position along the blue axis here sort of grabbed for us. Now, because I grabbed the single component blue uh, or Z, I guess, and then passing it into base color, this is grayscale. Um, it, it's not just assigning um, like um, the uh, Z to one and then the other two colors to blue. Everything, red, green, or blue, are taking on the, the value of Z. If um, you want to if you want to build a new vector where the other two um, components are just a, a zero by default, then you would have to use one of the nodes that builds out a specific type of data, kind of like this. So if we save this now, go back in here, now we're back to blue because the other two components are explicitly set to zero. So a quick review, that's position, split, and vector. Split gets component, vector builds a uh, a uh, component and just uh since we're here there is also a color node but as you can imagine the difference in practical sense between vector three and color are nil essentially color allows you to just use the color picker here to to set something explicitly you'll notice even that there is no input into color because if you're building a color procedurally you might as well just use a vector anyway thank you for listening to me uh talk uh, for a while on position and color nodes and um, if you like what you see, please um, like the video, subscribe if you want more, and uh, yeah, have a good day. More to come.